Today we're taking a look at the Pilar 3. Finally, a version of the Pilar that I was attracted to. Now, come on, focus over here on the knife. There we go. So I like that drop point style and start instead of more like a... Uh, boy, oh boy, the names of things just are not coming to me today. <laughs> Sheep's foot. It's a little bit less like a sheep's foot. It still is a little bit like a sheep's foot, but it's less like a sheep's foot than the ones before. This guy comes in two steels, 8CR13 or D2. Uh, frame lock, uh, G10 on one side, stainless steel on the other side. And hopefully by the time I post this, the sale is still going on at houseofknives.ca for Canadians because it's got a very good price of... $48.60 Canadian. Uh, the cheapest other price I found was at Blades Canada for $60, $59.99. So that's like uh, 12 bucks less. So that's not bad. At White Mountain Knives, it is $39.95 and the D2 version is $51.99. You save 10% off that, making it like uh, $36 or $47. So that's not bad at all. I found a store, uh, Lamnia in Europe, has got a good price compared to the other places that have the uh, Pilar 3. A little heads up, this review is going to be mostly pretty good. But there are some details I don't like. One of them, it might be a deal breaker for some people. So stick around. We're going to take a good look at the Pilar 3 from CRKT and designed by Jesper Voxness. Keep watching. All right, there it is. Like I said, it's got sort of a sheep's foot, sort of almost Nesmuk style blade, not really. Uh, I'm just gonna call it a sheep's foot drop point style blade. And the cutting edge is all belly. We've got a forward choil big flat section. We've got a nice uh, racetrack hole. Works good to deploy the blade. No jimping on the spine. Big stop pin up here. It's a fairly thick blade. And on the handle here, we've got a slab of G10, no liner at all, and a stainless steel frame lock side. Deep carry clip with flush screws, which I quite like. And exposed aluminum lanyard hole. And I really like this change. This, when I saw this, that's when I finally decided I'm gonna buy one of the Pilars because the other ones just were not that attractive to me. So between the blade and this end, I wanted to give it a try and I'm glad I did. Uh, we do have an over travel stop built into the frame lock. That's what that screw is doing right there. There's a little uh, tab so you can't over extend it. And most of this knife is pretty good. Uh, size comparison with the Ontario Rat 1. And line up those pivot pins. Clearly, it's a smaller knife. It, it's not really in the same category. But for those of you who are wondering, that's roughly the size of this knife. They've got a forward choil that's done correctly. I like that you've got a lot of shoulder here from the frame lock, the G10 and that side. So you get a really good grip there. It doesn't get hot with extended use. Very often forward choils are for very temporary use just because they just are not comfortable. But this one's done very well. And, you know, this is the third iteration of the knife. It should be done very well. The ball bearings in there, we've, uh, I haven't opened it up yet. I'm assuming they're stainless steel ball bearings. I didn't look at the specs to see exactly which ball bearings it was, but I seriously doubt that they are ceramic, but we'll see. I'll take it apart later on in the video. We've got button screws all over, even in this stainless steel, which that just looks silly to me, uh, except for the flush screws on the pocket clip. We've got chamfered edges everywhere. And the backspacer is slightly raised up, and then it comes out to this point, a big lanyard hole, easy to tie off paracord on that lanyard hole. And lockup, it's exactly 
where I want lockup to be on a new knife. There's lots of room for it to wear over. There's lots of room to get in with your thumb. Big chamfer with three big uh, jimping spots there. Easy to get to release the lock and close the knife. It just works really well. Blade centering, it's not perfect, but it's quite close. Let's see it go into a pocket clip. Pocket clip, let's see the pocket. <laughs> Let's see the pocket clip perform going into the pocket. Yay, yay, yay. There you go. So you've got uh, almost not quite half an inch sticking out of the pocket. It doesn't look bad. It's got a bead blast finish on the stainless steel pocket clip and frame. And then sort of same thing uh, on the aluminum. The blade here, I didn't mention it's got a nice swedge up here. It does perform okay with piercing tasks into most stuff. It's very thick behind the grind at the tip. And the big con that I was talking about, at least to me, it's a fairly big con, how thick it is behind the grind. It's too thick. And I'll give all the measurements in just a little while. Brant badging, you got CRKT here on the bevel. I would have much rather it be up here in this big Ricasso, but that's what a lot of brands do. Uh, the model number, 5317, or you can get the 5317 D2 model, which of course has D2 steel. You've got your ball bearing logo, Pilar, and Voxnes design. So, yeah. At least the badging's not too huge. You've got badging twice for the CRKT part of it. Not too fond of that, but it's, it is what it is, I guess. That's, that's actually a saying I don't like, so why did I use it? I don't know. The action is so smooth that don't, I don't even have to try hard to flick it out. Whoop. It just works. Either hand works quite well. And yet the detent's strong enough, you know, if I do that hard wrist flick while just holding the body of the knife, the blade doesn't come out. So the detent is dialed in quite well and good function. There's a little bit of side-to-side -side blade play. Now, it was like that from out of the box. So I've not adjusted it at all yet. It's not major or anything. It's just a little bit of flex. And so that's what it is. Great big cutaway here. Three scoops for a four, four to create the spring action from that frame lock arm. Let us uh, go over all the sizes and dimensions first. And then we'll take the knife apart in just a little while. First, the weight, 98 grams, 3.5 ounces. It's actually a little bit lighter than CRKT says it is. The factory sharpness, 140 best. So that's spot on average for budget knives, how they're sharpened from factories, how, how easily they cut through things. The cutting edge length, 71.3 millimeters, 2.81 inches. Blade length, Tip to the closest spot is 75.1 millimeters, 2.96. It is over three inches if you measure it to you know either the top or the bottom of the handle from the tip. So you decide uh, what applies in your area, if you've got three inch laws that is. The thickness of the blade at the flat section up here 3.62 millimeters, 0.1425, so a bit over an eighth of an inch. The blade depth, the widest points right at the heel, 27.3 millimeters, 1.07 inches. How thick is it behind the grind? Well, at the thinnest point, which is pretty close to the middle right here, it is 0.69 millimeters, 27 thousandths of an inch. At the tip, it's one millimeter, 38 thousandths of an inch. So it's about twice as thick at the tip than I'd like, but that does make the tip very tough. You know, you can jam it into stuff and it's not going to break very easily. <laughs> so turn that con upside down, I guess, but to me that's a big con. It's much too thick behind the grind. Grind angles, on average, uh, this side is 18.9 degrees, this side is 20.8 degrees. In reality, it starts here at 18.5, goes to 20.6, and up here 23.3 degrees. On this side, 22.7, goes to 16.3, and 
and then ends at 17.6 degrees. So there's a variation of almost six and a half degrees along the length of this cutting edge. So when you go to sharpen this thing for the first time, if you want to even out that edge, yeah, you're gonna have to waste a fair bit of steel. That's the big con. So the big con has all to do with the cutting edge. Too thick and too variable. It's just not well sharpened. That, that's my hobby horse. That's I, bet, I was on it last year. I'm still on it this year. We need to pressure manufacturers to do better. Consumers, we need to start complaining directly to the manufacturers, sending them emails, sending them, you know, complaints. They won't change otherwise. They just won't. Uh, the measurements. Handle length. I measured it from the very end of, you know, the backspacer and everything to the other head end here. 108.1 millimeters, 4.26 inches. Uh, grip area between my thumbs eight and a half centimeters, about three and a third inches. If you add the front choil, it's about 10 and a half centimeters and a little bit over four inches. So it's not bad. The thickness of the handle, 10.97 millimeters. That's 0.432 of an inch. So not too, not too thick at all. The handle depth, it's widest right. Oh, actually it's widest right here. That's where it was but that's not within the grip area. Usually I measure it within the grip area. So I should have measured it here. So this measurement is on the screen. That's the widest point in the grip area. This point here is 28.2, 1.11 inches. When the knife is closed, the widest point is right here at the beginning of the back spacer. 31.3 millimeters, 1.23 inches. And the total length of this knife Oh, I've started again in 2022. <laughs> I measure in metric and I just do a conversion. I forgot to do the conversion, so it'll be on the screen. It's 182.2 millimeters and the inches is right there. So, oh, and I got to go take care of Bandit and then we're going to take this thing apart. Before I take it apart, I was just starting. I wanted to show you this. Uh, I forgot about this about CRKT. There's a lot of loose play. These are T6 screws that have a lot of slop in them. So that's another con. Very easy to strip these out. And uh, they feel kind of soft to me too. When, you, when you've played with knives as many years as I have, you know, when I go to tighten it, I can feel that it wants to slip already. And yeah, that's not good. Oh, and they're free spinning. So I have to put this thing in a vise and put a screwdriver on either side. So another con. I'll finish taking it apart and get you back on. They used thread locker on the middle screw, but not on the back screw. That's why the middle one was the one that wasn't free spinning. Um, let me wipe this down. Yes. Don't want to get the grease all over my fingers and spread it all over this place. Steel ball, steel detent ball. And, you know, there's that over travel protection. And uh, clean that up a little bit. Not bad. Steel ball bearings in there. I'll give you a, whoop. I'll give you a close up shot of the ball bearings after I've cleaned them up. Uh, because they got grease on them, I'm going to change it to oil and uh, help the action even more. So that's good. Other than that, it's very straightforward, simple construction. Uh, there's the race that they put behind the G10, which is properly done. So I wasn't expecting anything less. You just can't have ball bearings running on G10 and have it last at all. So yeah, that's well done. And uh, I'll clean it up and uh, put it back together. Pros and cons. Mostly pros, it's comfortable, it's a good weight, uh, works quite well, opens, locks up nicely, you know, very tiny bit. Well, yeah, now it's no blade play. I've tightened it up nicely and it still moves freely. So it just wasn't tightened up all the way from the factory. So that's not bad. 
G10 slab is simple, works well. Backspacer is functional. Big lanyard hole for those people that want lanyards. And out the back, instead of coming off the spine or something, it's just out on the tail. So I like the placement of the lanyard hole a lot. Forward choil is done like forward choils should be done. Uh, blade shape, quite decent. The design itself is quite nice. And uh, yeah, it does look pretty good. I think I zoomed in a little too closely that time. There we go. So yeah, it's a nice knife. Except for too thick and poorly sharpened at the sharpening edge. The part of the knife that is the most critical. You know, if the rest of the knife is perfect, but this part, the part you actually, you know, cut things with, because it is a knife, it's for cutting. If that's not done well, mm, I'm not so sure. Now, I can sharpen this quite a bit better. I don't mind 8CR13. It's a decent steel. You can upgrade to D2 if you want to, uh, unless you need to have a stainless steel. It's a it's a decent budget stainless steel. I just wish they would have made that cutting edge a bit thinner because then I could sharpen it the way I want. The factory sharpness doesn't bother me in the long term, but it shows that, you know, I won't go over it again. It just shows that knife companies uh, don't really care how well it sharpened. You know, blade centering is close, but not perfect, but it works well. It feels good. It looks good. It's a decent knife from CRKT, one that I'm uh, not going to say that you shouldn't get. <laughs> I'm not sure if I recommend it after uh, doing all that other stuff with the uh, measurements and things, but probably. You just have to not mind how thick it is uh, behind the grind. Some people like really thick blades behind the grind, so yeah, for them, it's perfect. Pretty nice. If you're looking for one of these, check out my links down below. Uh, I've got referral links for some places. I did not find this on Amazon.com. So actually, no, I don't really have referral links for this. But if you go to White Mountain Knives, use my coupon code CCE and save yourself that 10%. So thanks for watching this video. Thank you for liking, sharing, commenting, and subscribing. And remember, friends, cut towards your chum not your thumb.